Hi, this is Will Ruddick with another installment of the Village Market Simulator um, that I know you've been waiting for. And in the last installment, we went over how uh, we could connect community currencies together with this idea of having common reserves. And what I wanted to do today was um, kind of rethink what those reserves are. So in the previous iterations of this and also what we've been doing on the ground, the common reserve that connected all our communities together was, was just a made up token that had no connection to markets or national currency. And instead, try to think of what happens if we make that reserve into national currency itself, or at least into a stable coin that represents national currency like DAI. Um, and so what we're gonna do today is basically say, okay, if a community comes along and has uh, some national currency or an aid organization like Red Cross comes in and decides to give some national currency to a community, like seed their reserve, what are the various policies uh, in place to sort of manage and you know create a market out of those uh, systems? And then we're gonna show you on the simulator itself kind of how that works, but right now I wanna go into what are those various policies and, and how does that work? So this is gonna be a little bit technical here. Um, but not too bad. So the idea is that we've got two kind of sets of, of um, um, controls or policies here. One that we call policies on the left here is things like pricing, issuance, and redemption. These equations are written into the smart contract. Um, and you can see that on GitHub, what that smart contract looked like. They're derived from um, what uh, Bancor is using in their smart contracts as well. And then we have controls on top of that. And right now those are being managed on the platform level that's being created by Sempo. Um, there will be some integration between these controls and the policies um, over the next year, and there'll be a lot uh, of other types of controls like voting systems and taxation and things like that that are gonna be added here, but here's kind of like the bare minimum here. So in the first place, we have pricing. So if, if we think about a community currency as a share, um, and, and this is kind of a different way of thinking about a community currency, right? I mean, we can really think about all currencies in a way as shares, right? So like the US dollar is a share of what? And the, the, the problem with that in, in national currencies is that it's really hard to define what that is a share of. Um, at least, you know, it, it becomes very unclear. If you can think about the US dollar as, as backed by maybe US taxes or uh, industries in the US. Um, but in our case, we can say, Using US dollars as a reserve, we can establish what would be the price of a share that's created. So if I have a hundred dollars and I create a 400 shares of that hundred dollars, um, I, I can decide in, with this equation to say, let that be a share price of one. So for instance, if my share price is reserve over share supply times uh, target reserve ratio, um, and I, on our platform, set uh, that target reserve ratio to 25%, then if I have a reserve of $100 and shares of uh, 400 shares, then I would have a share price of one, okay? So the basic idea, again, is to say, if we're gonna create community currencies as shares of a reserve, how do we price those currencies? And then there's another policy on issuance. So. Um, as I issue more shares, if I add reserves, so every time I add more, let's say Kenyan shillings to this reserve, well, I can mint or create more shares. And what this second equation does is it makes sure that as you're minting more shares, as you add more and more reserve, less and less shares get issued, and that actually increases the share price. So if you imagine these are shares of a house and you're improving that house, you're increasing your share value. Right, And on the control side, we set a maximum share price. So we, we don't want shares to jump too high. Um, and so we we're, right now we're setting a maximum share price of about two times the value of the reserve. So that's, you know, the, the share starts at a value of one, you know, one share, and then it goes up to a value of about two. After that, shares issued are just equal to the reserve being added. Um, and then with redemption uh, is kind of the opposite of issuance. So as I start pulling out the um, uh, the reserve, right? If I take some of my shares and I want to redeem them, so I'm basically burning those shares and I'm pulling out some of my reserve. Well, what I'm going to do with this equation is make sure that the share price actually drops. And 
uh, in terms of the platform control, we're going to throttle that by basically saying that people can only withdraw, let's say, 10% of their balance once a week. So we slow how fast that can happen. Um, and so these, these controls are things that we're really um, working with the communities here in Kenya on and making sure that they work in terms of creating stability of your share price so that it can be used as a currency, um, but also bring in things like uh, Red Cross to be able to uh, seed these reserves, right? So we want two things to be able to happen. We want these to be viable as local currencies, and I'll show you kind of how that works in the simulator, and then also for um, the Red Cross to be able to come in. So let, let's kind of go back to um, the simulator and see how that works. So um, in the simulation here, um, again, we've got um, we've got a city here in the upper right hand corner, um, and we've got various types of local actors here, and um, there 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 are different types of local actors like um, local production, like local labor. They're they're buying or they're selling their services to the city, so they're getting national currency in. Um, and they're selling it within the community. So let me clear this and just kind of restart that. So let's say we've got we've got a labor sector here. You know, so these guys represent the labor sector. They're also able to trade with each other. So national currency is coming in from the city. Um, they can use that for local production. Let's say buying chairs or something like this. And they can use it for local services. Let's say paying for school, local school fees. Um, and we can sort of build a little local market out of those things. And then. Um, they're, they need to import things, right? And so this would be a shop that they can buy stuff at, and that shop is going to replenish its supply back at the at the local at the at the city over time. And we can add a few more of those. And that that's basically, you know, this this is in in, a, in some ways kind of economics 101 in terms of a village, right? Where does your money come from? Okay, it's coming from the city over here. Um, and then you know, where does your money go? Well, it goes to buying imports. You know, where do those imports come from? Back from the city. So you get this loop of, of currency moving like this. And if there's ever a disaster or, you know, droughts or, or any, you know, if, if if the city no longer sends money to the community, if the community can't sell their labor or whatever it is to the city, then these local economies just dry up essentially. And so that's what we're trying to sort of avoid um, in, the, in, in using the idea of community currency. And so what happens is we have a cooperative here. Um, this cooperative is basically, if I if I look at their tokens, they 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 start with some amount of reserve, right? So in their case, they started with uh, uh, ten thousand shillings of reserve, and they created forty thousand shillings of supply. And immediately, the price starts to fluctuate, right? The the community members, if they have this these tokens, so these red ones here they have two options. They know they can buy back from the cooperative. And in this case, the cooperative represents 25 women. They all have shops. They're doing savings and loan with each other. So there's a motivation for them to be accepting these tokens back in. And as people put more money into that reserve, the token price goes back up. So right here, it's, it's up to one here. And then the community can begin to cash it out again, right? So that, that's the redemption policy, so they can cash it out slowly. And any community in the network or any business in the network can also mint or issue more tokens by adding more reserve back. So the reserve acts as this sort of buffer system, right? It, it, it gives collateral to the currency. It enables all the businesses in the network um, to take part in the system. And um, it, it brings stability to the system in that sense. So. Um, we can start adding more and more uh, uh, currencies or and businesses to this network, um, and so each one of these uh, cooperatives is essentially an issuer of credit. That credit is shares of their resource, right? So their resource in this case is going to be national currency, um, and and so what that means now is that we have a. a, a a decentralized credit system. It's still being backed by national currency, but the communities are able to leverage that national currency into their 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 share values. Um, and so, what that means is that there's some pros and cons to that, right? So the con is that, um, well, we, in this case now we need national currency to create the community currency, um, and we don't have a lot of national currency. Um, and so we're, we're dependent to some degree on aid coming in, like we're working with Red Cross right now on, on something called community inclusion currencies, 
um, as well as Semple on the platform here to basically enable donors to come in and support a community with this reserve that they create a share value out of. And they start trading that share value as a community currency. Um, Another uh, another con is that um, you know it limits the total amount you know of community currency. We're using a reserve ratio of 25% right now, so you have to have a minimum of a hundred dollars to create 400 uh, 400 tokens, right? And we start those out at one to one value with with uh, with the national currency. And as you start withdrawing, the value of those tokens start to drop. Um, but on the plus side, we have all the businesses as part of the network, and there's a there's a really um, exciting kind of concept here is to say, well, um, what if that reserve could be replaced with something, let's say, more stable than the national currency, um, such as you know indexes of commodities or futures contracts um, that are litigatable. Um, so I feel like you know this is a sort of stepping stone into that direction. It's basically taking the community currency concept and saying, okay, let's let's treat the currency as shares of a common reserve. Um, and so we're essentially creating kind of a credit system. And then the next step to this is sort of rethink what can act as that reserve. You know, what gives the system collateral? What gives the system sort of guarantees so businesses can join it um, without any fear? Um, and what makes it, you know, uh, what what makes it such that people can trust the system? And again, you know, how can you connect all these community currencies together, right? Through this idea of common reserves. Um, and so I think that's that's you know the next few years is going to be rethinking this concept of reserves. And there's a lot of groups doing this, like Open Libra, um, which are really really exciting programs. So um, it's exciting to be in this space, and we're very, very excited to, to be working with Red Cross as well in, in terms of rethinking how uh, aid can be uh, distributed out to communities. Um, and so this, uh, all this code is on GitHub under Grassroots Economics, so you can, you can download the simulator yourself and play around with some of the uh, simulations. And then in the next few months, we also hope to be moving this onto a CAD-CAD simulation, so we'll be able, it'll be a lot more robust. We can do, you know, millions of uh, interacting agents and have a lot more kind of robust uh, um, architecture. So thanks. See you next time.